I, Nicholas Leeson, have lost 50 million quid in one day! In this video, I want to profile the true story of a trader who lost $1.3 billion of a bank's money and whose life was the inspiration for the movie called Rogue Trader. As well, I will share with you the costly mistakes this trader made and how you can avoid them when you're trading. Hey traders, this is Mike Sir here. I've been an active trader for over 21 years and a trader coach for the past 15 years. In my videos, I profile all the top traders in the world and teach you how to replicate their incredible success. I've been fortunate to train many successful traders and in this video, I'm not gonna talk about a successful trader, but rather a trader who lost billions of dollars. His name is Nick Leeson. Nick was a star derivatives trader in the Singapore office of Barings Bank, one of Britain's oldest merchant banks. He was mainly involved in arbitrage trading of the Nikkei 225 index, which is the main Japan stock market index on behalf of Barings clients and later on for the firm. Arbitrage trading basically involves buying a security in one market and simultaneously selling it in another market at a higher price thereby enabling the trader to profit from the temporary difference in the cost per contract. Now Nick became very, very good at trading and helped the firm make a lot of money. And in a few years later, he would become the general manager of the company's Singapore trading division with increased responsibilities. But his success wouldn't last when he abandoned his low risk arbitrage trading and started making bets on the direction of the markets. He made a series of subsequent risky trades in highly leveraged derivative contracts that lost more than $1 billion of the bank's capital. These trades were not authorized by Nick's superiors and were hidden from them by falsifying the records in a little used errors account called 88888. This was possible because Nick was also in charge of the back office work of settling trades and looking after its books. Now this type of arrangement is highly unusual given the lack of checks and balances in the company. Now therefore it allowed Nick to continually manipulate the numbers showing up on Bearing's books to hide massive losses from some of his bad trades. As his trades started spiraling out of control, Nick fled Singapore to avoid prosecution but was eventually arrested in Germany. His billion dollar trading loss turned out to be about twice the available capital of bearings due to the leveraged futures trading contracts that he was holding. This led Bearings Bank, which had been founded in 1762, to be declared insolvent. Shortly after, in 1995, the Dutch bank ING bailed out the bank and bought it for one pound. Nick Leeson focused on trading mainly three futures markets. The future contracts for the Japanese Nikkei 225 stock index, the 10-year Japanese government bonds, which are the JGB futures, and the Euro-Yen futures. All these three future products were all traded simultaneously on the CIMAX, which is the Singapore International Monetary Exchange, and on a Japanese exchange such as the Tokyo Stock Exchange or the Osaka Securities Exchange. Nick's trading strategy was to arbitrage between the CIMAX and the exchanges in Japan and try to capitalize on small price differences between the futures contracts. So for example, what Nick would try to do was buy a futures contract on the CIMAX and sell it at a higher price on the Japanese exchange and pocketing the difference. Now, this was a highly profitable business for Bearings Bank as large price differences existed between the two exchanges and the trading volume was huge. But in reality, Nick was taking massive speculative positions based on the price direction of these futures contracts going up. When the prices of these futures contracts dropped, Nick doubled down and bought even more. 
His trading strategy was relatively simple. Basically, keep adding to losing positions so that your average cost of trades goes down and you hope that prices rebound and go back up to your average cost price. Unfortunately, this didn't happen. So what mistakes did Nick make in his trading that led to catastrophic losses? Now I've outlined them here. It's amazing. You've made back all the losses. Over $10 million. What did I tell you? Oh, ye of little faith. You keep doubling up, and sooner or later, you're bound to win. Once Nick knew that he had free reign to the bank's capital, then he couldn't help himself by betting more of the bank's money to try to recoup his earlier trading losses. Nick would keep adding to his losing positions, even doubling his positions to try to recoup his losses. In one instance, the strategy worked out for Nick, but as we all know, this was a losing strategy from the beginning. Jesus, man, the quickness on me. This is going to kill the market, man. And Nikkei's going to fall through the floor. Nick's desperate attempts to recover from his losses came to a crashing halt in early 1995 when the Kobe earthquake hit Japan and the Nikkei index fell sharply. At this point, his losses skyrocketed out of control and there was no way he could ever recover from this. I mean, if it sticks around 18,000, then my options are still in the money and I could get the position back. I might even come out ahead. Nick, you listen to me now, right? Listen to me. You don't fight the market, man. Even if you can make the margin calls, what happens when the contracts expire? Hey, way the market's going at the moment, your losses could be catastrophic. There's a popular saying amongst traders that you should never fight the market. No matter what direction you believe the market should go, the market is always right and you should always follow the market. Going against the market will lead to losses. In fact, Nick's initial trading losses were just under $200 million. That total skyrocketed when he made even riskier bets on the direction of the futures contracts in the hope of reducing, if not erasing, his losses. That was the turning point. That was when I decided I couldn't stand around any longer, hoping the market would move in my favor. I was gonna have to make it move. I didn't care how much money it took. I was gonna go for broke. His entire trading strategy had been based on a bet that the Nikkei 225 index would rise. This was a very, very dangerous way to think because Nick didn't care how much money he would lose. He was willing to lose all of the bank's capital to ensure that his trade became profitable and that the Nikkei uh, 225 index would go up. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, there are three things you can do. First is smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, hit the subscribe button to watch more videos like this, and hit the notification button so you'll be notified of future videos where I profile the best traders. Second, if you're looking to learn how you can be the next top trader, please go to my website, mikesur.com, to download my free ebook, Become the Next Millionaire, where I profile a few of my millionaire students. Lastly, if you're looking for a mentor and want to learn directly from me, please go to mikesur.com to apply to work with me.